Oh, what's that? Is that your holiday suitcase? Let's have a look. Oh, where are the books? You think you only need to pack one book? Do you know what you're saying? You're willing to run the risk of running out of books on holiday. On holiday, the only time in this capitalist soup hole where you actually get three minutes to yourself and you're willing to risk that time feeling like you'd like to read and not being able to? Well, I can't stand by as a friend and watch this. So I have created a list of six books that I think you should be taking on holiday this summer. And I haven't only brought the blurbs, I've brought the maths. I've collected everything you think you might need in your suitcase, but actually don't and have worked out the girthy, weighty equivalents so that you can't tell me. You don't have room in your suitcase for books. I never want to hear that sentence ever again. No, don't. Look, we've been through enough. Did you know that a pair of holiday heels like this, admittedly yours are probably a little bit more strappy, but the heel is what we're looking at, can weigh up to and above 720 grams? Well, if you're willing to admit that actually on holiday you want to commit and reconnect to your true flat-footed self, you will not only be able to fit in this book, The Overstory by Richard Powers, coming in at a measly 524 grams, you will also be able to pack in this book, The Housekeeper and the Professor, which comes in at 189 grams. Weightless, if you will. I am personally done with the days of being a three footwear packing woman. I know in my heart that I'm gonna wear the same pair of manky sandals come rain or shine. But at least when I do, I won't be sitting on a sun lounger with nothing to do. I'll have these to keep me raised above the ground. If you haven't heard about The Housekeeper and The Professor, it is genuinely one of the most beautiful books I've ever read. It's translated from Japanese and it follows a retired maths professor who is very difficult and is losing his memory. All of the other housekeepers keep quitting. It's kind of like Mary Poppins, but reverse ages. And it's about this one housekeeper who cracks him. They become beautiful, platonic, wholesome friends, not only with him, but with her son who is obsessed with baseball and together they bond over maths. It's so good. Why would you spend your God-given week away tottering above the earth in these, running the risk of having to navigate a medical system you neither have any insurance for or know anything about, nor probably the language with which to navigate it, when instead you could be reading a wholesome book about hope, love and maths. Then there's The Overstory. This is a book that loads of people want to have time to read but rarely make time for. It's actually kind of seven books cleverly interwoven together into one amazing plot. I'll link an uh, interview I did with the author below but I just think that he is a genius and this book will be studied for years to come. If you haven't read in a while and you want to pick up a book, I think this one will really grab you, immerse you and pull you through its pages. It's so good and I think a chunky book on holiday is just perfect. Some people like to bring perfume on holiday. That's cute. You spend the rest of the year trying to live up to the civilised standards of unreachable cleanliness that society pushes on us and the one week you get off you try to pretend that you're gonna smell like this and not like the five pound bottle of sun cream you picked up at the supermarket the day before you left. An optimist. Instead you could pack braiding sweetgrass. This is the book that you pack if you've spent the rest of the year feeling guilty about not reading anything about the climate but also don't want to spend your your holiday reading about stuff that's just sad. The subtitle of this is Indigenous Wisdom, Scientific Knowledge and the Teaching of Plants and it's a beautiful balance of vigorous honesty about what has happened to Indigenous communities and knowledge, a resurrecting of some of that knowledge, generously shared, lots of beautiful anecdotes about the author's life, how she has learned to keep her own pace in life, the people that she's met along the way and some really fascinating scientific facts you can tell people over your sun loungers. And wow them with your knowledge. I wasn't prepared for how gently paced this book was when I first read it. I was on a deadline so I had to rush through it and I really regret it which I think is one of the reasons it deserves a place on your list. This book will make you slow down and look around you and appreciate the things and the nature that you might be getting able to experience so you don't get to experience the rest of the year and I just think it's perfect. I mean you want to pretend that you smell like flowers instead of actually reading about the flowers? Make it make sense! 
grams. <laughs> this is 250 grams. This is just 300 for 50 extra grams. You could change your life. If again, you aspire to read big political books and activism inspiring reads on your holiday, but you know that actually when you get there, you might not feel like that. How to be a craftivist, The Art of Gentle Protest by Sarah Corbett is what you need to be packing. Sarah is a wonderful human and she talks about activism as an introvert, a different way into changing the world that doesn't involve attending protests and shouting, but it's more about changing minds behind closed doors, befriending people, finding innovative ways and art projects that can infiltrate what we see as normal, but in fact should not be normal. This is broken up into loads of bite-sized chunks. So if you just want to dip in a bit and then go and do something else, it's a perfectly structured book for that. And it's also really, really easy to read with lots of inspiration in it as well. So if you were thinking about packing your iPad, which even the 11 inch is 466 grams, still quite freaking heavy, instead turn it off, leave it in a drawer. This at a very skinny 448 grams surely deserves a place in the suitcase. A place in the suitcase. Fire Rush by Jacqueline Crooks. I've talked about this already in my Women's Prize video, so I won't go over the whole plot line for you. But what you do need to know is that while it is a really difficult topic, it's told in this beautifully lyrical way. There's music in it, it's very flowy, it has that kind of really unique rhythm that is perfect for if you're checking out of your own life rhythm. Having something else to coast on and read is just a beautiful reading experience. It also has a lot about folklore and ancestry in it. And it also takes place partly in the outer skirts of London, partly in Brighton. And then the other half of the book takes place in Jamaica. This one is on the shortlist for the Women's Prize for Fiction. So a lot of people are talking about it right now. So why not join people while they're reading it to read it too? And you never know, it might even win. And then you'd have already read the book that won the Women's Prize. In exchange for packing this, I'm going to suggest bear with leaving behind some of your toiletries. The sum of these three toiletries, some facial scrub, a deodorant and a razor comes to 350 grams. And for a mere extra 100 grams, you could have this beauty. Or if you get it in paperback, it will be a lot lighter. Razors are for the patriarchy. I will not be shaving while on holiday. That sounds a lot like work. The skincare routine can be stripped back because God knows I'm gonna be putting it in the sun. I'm gonna be slathering it with factor 50. So we don't need to make mess with it further. Just give, give yourself a break on holiday, okay? We don't need the 10 step skincare routine, it's ridiculous. And then deodorant. I do suggest you bring some, but if you're like me and you are a wild fanatic, they do also do like a cardboard recyclable travel size one. So I'm terrible for overestimating how much I actually use when I'm away for like a week. And I've lost a lot of suitcase space in the past because of that overestimation. So working out how much toiletries you're actually gonna use and then using all that extra space for books is a power move. What can I say? And then lastly, the dreaded straighteners. I don't use these that much when I'm at home and I don't know how many times I've brought these on holiday with me, thinking that I might have a bout of glamorous fever and want to do my hair. But realistically, even if I've done it once or twice on holiday, I don't look back on that holiday and think, oh, that's that holiday where my hair looked nicer than usual. You're on holiday. Nobody cares what your hair looks like. For once, the photos are gonna be full of amazing outfits and cool backgrounds and beautiful buildings. Nobody's gonna be looking at your hair. For 403 grams, it's not dancing for its dinner. Exchange those silly metal things for Julia Armsfield's Our Wives Under the Sea. This book hit me around the face like a wet fish. <laughs> is that the best way to sell a book? Okay, it sucker punched me in the guts. This is about a woman whose wife has been sent in a submarine on a scientific mission and gets stranded. For months, she thinks that she is dead and Leah is trapped almost at the bottom of the ocean without being able to communicate with anyone to say that she's alive. But when she does resurface, she is somewhat changed. So this is about strained but wildly loving relationships that have been challenged by a circumstance nobody could have predicted with really spooky, scary, eerie undertones that are so atmospheric, they'll draw you in. If you love a thriller, but you don't actually wanna read about blood and gore and like scary people killing each other on holiday, this is much more of a kind of literary, uneasy, but beautifully written book to like feed that thrill hunger without actually having to read about anything too graphic. Also great if you're going somewhere by the seaside. Look, I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say, Lena, I've got an e-reader. I didn't need this video. Well, good for you, but sometimes e-readers die. 
Paul. Sometimes they need charging and you can't find the charger. Angela. And some of us just revel in the tactile pleasure of an actual book in an actual world. Especially when you're going away and you really want to have a present experience. So I hope that gave you some ideas of books that you might want to take on holiday. Let me know some of your favourite books that you have read while away in the comments below. Happy adventuring even if you're just spending the summer in your back garden. You can go anywhere with these books. Anywhere! It's the beauty of literature! Thank you so much for watching. Uh, this video has been made possible by the Gumption Club who for some reason keep tipping me so these videos keep happening in your freaking sub feed. It's not my fault, I keep trying to come up with weird video ideas to put them off, but they just keep supporting me. If you'd like to join them, the Gumption Club links are below. And if you like this video, I think you might like one of these videos. Just a hunch, Frog Snog out. <laughs>